Uh, we have two speakers in, in uh, this session. One is uh, Professor Asher Bolinski from Northwestern University. Uh, second speaker is uh, Diaz Yarif from uh, Caltech. Uh, we have two speakers, but only uh, 80 minutes. So I wish the talk c can be longer, but c'est la vie. Uh, so the, uh, uh, the first uh, talk will be on information aggregation in uh, large markets by Asher Bolinski. Uh, Volinsky uh, has made important contributions in the past 20, 20 years in either economic theory or industrial organization, uh, in particular the economics of network and the uh, synthetic bargaining foundation of market equilibrium and uh, cooperative game. So uh, welcome. Subsequent step in the analysis of this question is uh, its investigation in environment with strategic agents. So Milgram and Wilson address this question for the case in which uh, price formation is modeled as an option. Their insights presumably inform us not only about a, a formal option, but also about a class of trading environment in which prices are formed uh, in a process that shares important features with an option. But in some other trading environment, price formation involves other elements that could uh, give rise to different insights, and uh, we would like to uh, uh, explore this a little bit. Okay. So let's go to the model. Uh, the common framework is uh, we have a single seller with a single indivisible good and many potential buyers. The state seller type. Uh, uh, so the state of this market is W and take a uh, uh, finite number of possible values, 1 to N, with prior probability draw of W. Buyers have common values. So they all value their good at EW, uh, when W uh, is where its valuation depends on the state, and uh, it's increasing in the state. So the states are older, so the, 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 the value of the state W Payoff of a, a transaction at price T is V minus T for the involved buyer. So uh, uh, if a buyer uh, gets the good at the price T, uh, this is the uh, payoff that they get, and the seller gets the payoff of T. Uh, let's talk about the information. W is a, the state is the private information of the seller. Each buyer observes a signal X coming from this meter bar, X lower bar, X upper bar. Conditional on state W, signals are the IID, and the uh, distribution function uh, uh, denoted GW with 
density little g uh, is strictly positive, is assumed to be strictly positive on this interval, the likelihood ratio is weakly increasing. Uh, so the most favorable signal, uh, most indicative of high quality or a good state is uh, x upper bar and least favorable is x lower bar. We say that signals are boundedly informative if the likelihood ratio at the top is uh, smaller than it is finite. We say they're unboundedly informative if the likelihood ratio at the top is infinite, namely if the signals that exceedingly tell you that this is a, 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 a separate the state W plus one from the state W. Now, uh, let, me, let me talk about two benchmarks here. So complete information is a W, the state is known to all values. So in this situation, competitive equilibrium and equilibrium of various uh, option formats will give you the, the price in state W will be the value in W. Another benchmark is when a bias has no informative signal at all. So in this situation, competitive equilibrium and equilibrium of various option formats will give you that the price of state W uh, will be just the expected, uh, uh, will be just the expected value. So I'm going to talk about, uh, uh, so these were the benchmarks, and I'm going to talk about three alternative price formation scenarios. So here are the three. The third is an ordinary third price option. We have n buyers participate, participants uh, observe the number of participants. Participants private, privately observe a noisy signal from the signal technology that I mentioned to you before, the signal X. And, uh, and then they simultaneously bid, and the price is the highest bid. So it's a pr third price option. Another price formation scenario is sequential sell. The seller sums its buyer sequentially at a cost S per uh, observation, per sampling. Uh, a sum whose buyer observes the signal, signal X, from the same signal technology that I described to you before, and uh, does not observe the history of the sell. doesn't know how many other buyers uh, the seller has spoken with. And then they bargain over price, and this result in a tr transaction or disagreement. After disagreement, the search continues. If there is an uh, agreement, then uh, 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 the process uh, concludes with trade. So the sequential search environment shares uh, most of the features with the ordinary uh, auction environment, except that instead of the uh, 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 buyers bidding simultaneously, they are being sampled sequentially, uh, uh, but the signal technology is the same signal technology. A third scenario is an uh, auction with its endogenous bid solicitation, or you can call it a simultaneous search as an alternative uh, name for it. Here we have a uh, capital N potential buyers. The seller solicits a batch of buyers, again at the cost S per buyer. The number of solicited buyers is NW. It may depend for the seller is informed about the trade. It will depend on the, the trade. And solicited buyers privately observe noisy signals, again, from the same technology, and, uh, but they do not observe the number of solicited uh, buyers. They do not know how many other people have been solicited. And then they simultaneous bidding, and the price is the highest bid. So this is a hybrid uh, environment uh, uh, of, the, of the third scenario. The combined elements of the auction with elements of the search. So these are the three price from alternative price formation scenarios that I'm going to talk about in this environment. So just some comments about them. The ordinary auction, not much to say, it's a familiar model. Sequential, sequential search is also a familiar model, uh, except here it has this adverse selection and uh, the signals that the, uh, that the, the buyers get. Uh, the third scenario is la uh, somewhat uh, less familiar. It's called in between the two. There's endogenous solicitation like in the sequential search, but the price is uh, formed in uh, bidding like in the auction. <coughs> in 
few are familiar with the uh, model of the Deccan Jazz from econometric in 1983, the Basel model, you can think of this endogenous uh, certification as a verde jazz with uh, added element of adverse selection. It, it helps to uh, uh, locate it within the literature. Now, uh, these models look at the scale of the single, single unit, but they get straightforwardly embedded in the market. So the source of our interest in them I is not uh, the for, uh, as, a, as a mechanism for the scale of the particular units, but as a model of the market. Uh, and this can easily, uh, I'm going to talk about one unit, but you can easily embed it and uh, turn it into a market model. With, uh, uh. Now, the, the second and third model, I'm talking about the sequential third and is that uh, think of the market for loans. A borrower, potential borrower with private information, this is the counterpart of the seller in our framework, uh, is applying for a loan uh, to multiple lenders. These, these are the counterparts of the buyer to the seller. Uh, and can do it sequentially or simultaneously. So this will correspond to the second scenario, the third scenario that I was expecting to. Broker will done model this situation with a standard common value option, but So, having introduced the three price formation models, we will now inquire about information aggregation by prices. What, what do I mean by information aggregation? A price aggregates information well if they are not near, uh, if they are, sorry, if they are near the true value. Then I would say the prices aggregate information well. If you take W, the price is near VW. Prices aggregate uh, if they are the same across states. So let's start with uh, uh, a common the ordinary common value option. So uh, we're talking about information aggregation there. So we are looking at the sequence of first price common value options indexed by scale. So the number of bidders are indexed by scale goes to infinity across these uh, and we look at the corresponding sequence of equilibrium. And uh, equilibrium price, so you have P, W, K. If the winning bid is option K in the sequence, in states W. This is a random error. And with a bar, a P, W bar, if uh, the limit of this in probability is such as this, and F uh, upper bar is the limit distribution of the uh, uh, winning bid state W. So this is just notation. Uh, so with very informative signals, that is the likelihood ratio the top is large for all W, prices aggregate information well in the large common value option. Formally, this result says that the limit price is equal to the value for all W if and only if its likelihood ratio at the top is infinity for all W. Now, if the uh, likelihood ratio is not infinity, namely if uh, the signals are boundedly informative, but it is large, the price will be close to VW. So it will be approximated to the price of the aggregate information well. And in such a case, the Now, uh, result one is due to Milgram, and uh, Wilson had some earlier results uh, uh, leading to this. Now, two, I mention it, I, I, I state it as a result, but in fact, it's a, it's a fairly obvious corollary of the same argument. If you go just to Milgram's argument and you do it for 
large uh, likelihood ratio mu zero is low. But formally, I checked it only for m equal two, but believe me, it is lower. Okay. So this is what we have to say on the about the ordinary option, or what they had to say actually, not what we had to say, but what they had to say on the large ordinary option. And if you want a picture. Uh, So this is the picture for uh, a large uh, a common value option. So now I want to talk about sequential search. So the result of sequential search with adverse selection is based on uh, a joint paper with Lauer Mass. There is a single seller, I remind you, I've already said it, and continuum prospective bias. The seller samples bias sequentially at the cost S. Sample bias observe a signal X with the same technology of signal S was in the option. A seller and buyer uh, bargain over the price. Agreement needs to trade at the agreed price and end of search. If agreement to continue search, payoff of ending a transaction at E after N, and for tran transacting buyer is the value minus the price, for other buyers is zero, and for the seller is the price minus the sampling cost. Now we gloss over some modeling details of varying importance and. Uh, uh, and go to information aggregation in this sequential search model. So what do we do here? We do a similar exercise to the one we did in the option. We look at a sequence of such models, indexed by k, such that the sampling cost uh, goes to zero over this sequence of models. It becomes easier and easier to cross this model to, to sample the, the bias. And look at the corresponding sequence, uh, sequence of equilibria. Uh, equilibrium price, you have the transaction upper bar is the limit of this. And the result that we get for information aggregation in this environment is represented by the following picture. So this is the case in which signals are bounded informally. The likelihood ratio at the top could be very large. So signals could be very informative but bounded informally. We get no information aggregation whatsoever. Namely, the prices are as large as you wish. History is not observed. Now, if the likelihood ratio at the top is not bounded, uh, then the typical picture looks like that. So, the, uh, now, the, this picture is, uh, is drawn generic case, generic in some sense that I will not uh, explain exactly, but for this generic case, the picture looks like that. There will be, in some case, the price will be fully aggregated information, and in other case, there will be pulled with some engagement space. In particular, the previous picture is a special case of that picture, which look like. 
Okay, so this is the sequential search. Now, uh, notice that in the sequential search, unlike in the option, perfect information aggregation requires more than just likelihood ratio at the top being the uh, CP. It has to be uh, that, uh, uh, in fact, it has to be that if uh, as X goes to, uh, as theta becomes more and more informative, this likelihood ratio goes to infinity at, at, at some rate. The precise requirement some measure that we call lambda, which is a pairwise measure, uh, pairwise measure has to be this infinity dimension lambda, which is defined just in terms of the distribution for any pair of states, and uh, uh, to be uh, for information to be aggregated, aggregated perfectly, this lambda could be a, a number, any number between zero and infinity, uh, and to uh, information to be aggregated perfectly, it has to be uh, infinite. So if i and j are good, like we saw in this picture, this time, the lambda going from here to here, going from here to here, up to zero, the lambda going from here to here is infinity. So this measure lambda that is uh, determined from j to e, which is defined in terms of infinity, and that's determined from j to e, Sense of information aggregation uh, in sequential search. Now, I, I want to talk about the third scenario, which is a less familiar scenario. This is a scenario we discussed in, in, in a different lecture. Here you have a single seller and n potential bidders. Here I'm restricting the, the discussion to just two states. So W could be uh, uh, state L or state H, with L being the the low quality state and A is the high uh, quality state. Uh, and everything else is as before. The seller solution is N, uh, N buyers, uh, and they are randomly drawn at the marginal cost per, per buyer at a greater than zero. And the signal technology is the same, the gate signal is the same. The seller knows W, the bidders do not, w, uh, do not know W and N. I'm just reminding you what I've already told you. They then bid simultaneously, highest bidder wins, ties are broken randomly, and the payoffs I've already told you, winning bidder gets the value minus the price, other bidders get zero, sellers get the price minus the cost of dumping. So just because you are less familiar here, let me tell you uh, a, a few more words about this model. The seller's uh, a strategy, uh, uh, the seller here has a strategy, a solicitation strategy, how many bidders to take in each one of the states. The bidders have a bidding strategy, uh, and uh, it's from a signal, a set of signals to, to bid. And a symmetric and pure strategy equilibrium uh, has this two equilibrium conditions that each bidder, uh, the bid for each bidder maximizes their expected payoff given the uh, strategy of the seller. They don't know, they don't know the state, and therefore they don't know how many other bidders can come on the bid, but they know the seller strategy, so their bid is optimal given the seller strategy and the strategy of the other bidders, and the uh, uh, seller strategy, given the bidding strategy of the buyers, the seller solicitation strategy is optimal, so these are standard equilibrium conditions. Uh, we look, like we did before, a sequence of such models indexed by k, where the sampling cost goes to zero over the sequence. We have along the sequence to increase the number of potential buyers denoted by capital N over k. It always gets large enough, this is what this condition says. And then we look at the sequence of equilibria of this corresponding gain, and the equilibrium price is the winning bid, uh, so PWK is the winning bid in option K in state W, and uh, E upper bar is the limit of bid in probability strategy J, and F upper bar is the limit in prediction of the winning bid in state W. So what we get in this model we get the results are also in between, this model is in between the option and the third, and the results are somehow also in between the option and the third. It exists here two types of equilibria. In one, uh, 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 one type of equilibrium is partially revealing, namely in the limit, the uh, expected equilibrium price in state L is different than the expected equilibrium I'm talking here about a situation.
situation with bounded likelihood ratio at the top. The likelihood ratio at the top is bounded. So uh, uh, I, I get uh, this partial irreducibility of two. And this is qualitatively like the equilibrium in the ordinary order. And under certain conditions, the also exists sequence of equilibria that converts to the cooling down. I say exists in quotation marks, I mean that to, to, to state and prove the existence remark, we have to go through some work. We have to look on a grid of prices and then take the grid to the size of the grid to zero and so forth. And so this is why I say why this is in quotation marks. But the, the big picture here in this model, we get these two types of equilibria, one resembling the auction, the other uh, resembling the sequential curve. Now, uh, Like in the ordinary auction, if the likelihood ratio at the top is G H over G L and X up the bar, if this is made very large, namely the signals are very informative, uh, then uh, this equilibrium aggregate information well. This price test, uh, the expected price test, the expected yield within the equilibrium gets closer and closer to the value. Expected ex ante informative. Um, so, what do we learn from it? Ordinary auction aggregates information better than sequential search. Because you saw in ordinary auction, if the signals are fairly informative, if they are very informative, you get full aggregation of information in the large auction, or you get something close to it. Uh, uh, and in the uh, sequential search, is different. Auction with bidder solicitation gives rise to uh, both sort of uh, uh, both sort of things uh, and it therefore is in between uh, it's, it's in between the two also with respect to the information aggregation. The solicitation effect distinguishes the two scenarios with endogenous solicitation, the sequential search and the auction with endogenous solicitation from the ordinary auction. Being solicited whether in sequential search or, or in the auction with endogenous solicitation already contains information that interacts with the signals information. In the auction, you bid, on, you bid only based on your signal. Everything else is known to you and the signal is what you learn and you bid with uh, uh, the signal. In these other two models, there is an, another piece of information that you learn from just being solicited. Just being solicited teaches you something about the state and uh, uh, interacts with the information that's contained with the signal. Now, uh, in ordinary auction, information aggregation is determined by the relative strength of the signal and the winner's scarce. In the other two scenarios, the winner's scarce is replaced or supplemented by the solicitation curse of blessing on what you learn from the Now, the interest in information aggregation is motivated by uh, the consequences for uh, allocation of resources. In the basic model that I presented to you here, so long as trade takes place, information has no allocative efficiency consequences because it's always good to have trade. But if you added some structure to this model, for example, made some of the values smaller than zero. The seller alternative, the seller's cost is larger than some of the values. Or you let the sellers have some uh, unobservable investment that has been cheap the distribution, then this 
will start having the question whether prices aggregate information uh, or, or not, we start having uh, consequences for the efficiency of the allocation of resources, the limited resources by the future generation. Uh, let me just explain a little bit more what's going on. So let's, uh, although the ordinary auction and the sequential search are ideal for arbitrary number of states, let's do them now all three scenarios, talk only about the case in which there are just two states. So for significant information aggregation to take place, there should be values of the signal such that the expected value for a bidder or, or buyer, conditional on the signal, and conditional on transaction taking place at the price close to PA, it has to be a positive signal. This is, uh, this is what Max calls the information aggregation in sequence. Now, this requires that there are values of X such that the probability of state H conditional on signal X and transaction taking place at the price close to the H can be supported as one. There are values of the signal that uh, the bidder believes to a very high probability conditional on the things the bidder knows. The bidder knows uh, the price at which they are going to uh, win, if they are going to win, that they were solicited, the signal, that this probability will be close to one. Now, this probability can be, uh, can be presented as, as follows. And you see that what you have in the numerator and the denominator is the product of four likelihood ratios. So this likelihood ratio, this comes from the price, as you can observe, it is just a formula. But you have these three other likelihood ratios that de de uh, uh, determine this probability. Uh, and uh, to get an idea of what they are, the probability that you transact at price P conditional on A, uh, uh, the likelihood ratio of transacting at price P conditional on A and the value of conditional on L, this is what we call the winner's share set. This is what we call in options the winner's share set. And it varies in the ordinary in the ordinary auction it should have to be smaller than one which is actually often the case that it should be smaller than four and in the other situation it should be bigger so this is one likelihood ratio another likelihood ratio is uh, the signal effect involves as you said the arrangement of signal and the third likelihood ratio involves the, uh, the, 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 the bidder learns or the, the buyer learns from being solicited so this is the solicitation effect Conditional distribution uh, uh, being solicited conditional on A is what we will assume to happen that uh, 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 the probability of being solicited conditional on L. So in the ordinary auction, this is one. Nothing is being learned from being solicited because you know you are at the auction. In the other two scenarios, you learn something uh, from, from it. Now, for this probability to be near one, it has to be a signal effect, and the signal effect 
very important that you emphasize the endorsement of solicitation that arises naturally in certain trading, in certain trading scenario, scenario, like the sequential shares or, or BD with solicitation, affects the formation aggregation by, by prices. It is clear how the endorsement of uh, solicitation interferes with aggregation and informs seller of the lower price, solicits more buyer, and so gives rise to a solicitation effect. It changes the base probability and mitigates the signal effect. And you saw that if you do it so extremely, uh, so the prices contain no information whatsoever. Sometimes the endogenous of solicitation might work in the other direction. In the partially rebuilding equilibrium of the auction with the bidder solicitation, when in the equilibrium it so happens the bid ratio is greater than one, prices aggregate the information better than the in the ordinary case. Okay, so this is something I didn't show you. I, I glossed, I, I skipped over it when I uh, analyzed this scenario. But uh, this is something that can also happen here. So this endogenous solicitation could bring to uh, a, a situation in which uh, it dampens the information. Information doesn't get into the prices. This is what we saw in most extremely in the sequential search. And it could happen also in the auction with the solicitation. But there is another possibility in the auction of endogenous solicitation in certain uh, values of the parameters, which might be the information aggregation with some solicitation. The signals are boundedly informative. Let me stop here. Thank you very much. Uh, it's about the time to start the second section, so we'll leave all questions to, to the end of the uh, session, if time allows. <laughs>